Anthony Grasso here, bringing you financial news that you can use. This particular video, I'm gonna do a stock review on Blue Apron. Now, Blue Apron has been one of the most disastrous IPOs in recent years. Is the company still worth investing in right now with the Wall Street Bets Army that set its sights on it for a short squeeze? Well, let's find out together. I'm gonna to go over a summary of the company, its product offering, recent headline news, financials, analyst projections, and I'm gonna give it my buy, hold, or sell recommendation for both your short-term and long-term growth investors out there. And as always, folks, don't forget to smash that like button down below it definitely helps and consider subscribing and hit that notification bell like your daily stock reviews and recommendations from an unbiased source so let's get right into it so as always this video is brought to you by weeble an online brokerage trading platform where you can buy stocks options etfs and cryptocurrencies if you sign up today and deposit any amount you can get up to 12 free stocks by using my referral link in the description down below so Blue Apron Holdings operates a direct to consumer platform that delivers original recipes with fresh and seasonal ingredients. It operates the Blue Apron Market, an e-commerce market that provides cooking tools, utensils, pantry items, and other products. Now, in addition, the company offers Blue Apron Wine, a direct to consumer wine delivery service that sells wines, which can be paired with its meals. It serves young couples, families, singles, and empty nesters. The company offers its services through other uh, order selections on website or mobile applications, primarily in the United States and also Walmart now. Now, Blue, uh, Blue Apron Holdings was founded in 2012 and is headquartered in New York, New York. So let's look at some news of, this, uh, of the company specifically. So a couple months back, uh, Blue Apron started selling on Walmart's website. Now this move uh, to walmart.com is part of a larger effort to expand into new channels, including third-party sales platforms that bring significant new audiences to Blue Apron, the retailer said in the statement. Now Blue Apron says it expects to announce more offerings of this kind in 2022, but was not specific about any petit, uh, potential distribution partners. But one thing that concerned me with his news back then was the new approach might cannibalize their subscription-based services that they offer, but I will definitely get into that a little later. But the biggest news that uh, that's coming on the stock right now is that uh, Blue Apron is possibly the next big short squeeze going on right now. Now, Blue Apron has been seeing quite a bit of positive mo uh, movement lately with, with no news behind it specifically to say, why did it just jump up so fast and so far? And there's a lot of um, short sellers out there with a huge percentage of the stock. That's led to some traders uh, latching onto the name as the short squeeze targets is ready to pump up. Now, 9.4 million shares of the stock have changed hands so far today. To put that in perspective, the meal kit company's daily average trading volume is only around 2.9 million shares. I will get uh, uh, I will talk about this later on in the video, but let's all go ahead and, and examine the this company as a whole. So let's go ahead and look at some of the fundamentals of the company right now. So um, the stock is currently trading at $5.73 a share with a market capitalization of $205 million. Now the company is projected to have $512 million of revenue for 2022 with a negative earnings of $96 million. Now the revenue is projected to increase over the next few years to around $702 million by the end of 2024, but they are still projected to have negative earnings of 19 million. The revenue is forecast to grow though about 15 percent per year but let's go ahead and look at some key measures of the company let's look at the valuation analysis uh, right now because the earnings of uh, blue apron are not available or negative the price of sales and the price to book ratios are the most appropriate valuation measures therefore blue apron seems inexpensive with the price to sales ratio of only 0.4 times below that of the industry median a price to sales ratio of 0.74 however the price to book of 2.3 is in line with the industry median of 1.64 now when i'm comparing blue apron price to sales ratio versus the fair ratio taking into account the company's forecasted earnings growth profit margins and other risk factors Blue Apron is expensive based on its price to sales ratio compared to the estimated price to sales ratio of 0.2 times. Now, when looking at the fair uh, share price versus the fair value, when looking at its future cash flows, though, for this estimate, we're going to use the discounted cash flow model. Our estimate of fair value is $39. So it seems undervalued based upon the future cash flow, the discounted cash flow model. Look, let's look at the profitability marks of this company. Now, although profitable on a gross basis, Blue Apron is in line profitability in the industry. Its operating net margins are also in line with the medians. 
They don't really pay any dividends uh, like most of its peers. And then looking at the growth of the company, the earnings of um, Blue Apron have declined at a greater rate than revenues. Additionally, the average company in the, in the market in the industry was able to improve its earnings result over the same period. Blue Apron is forecasted to remain unprofitable over the next three years. Now, looking at the earnings trend, uh, even though Blue Apron is unprofitable, there was a reduced losses over the past five years at a rate of 22.3% per year. And that's partly because the CEO, the new CEO that's taken over the company, she's actually uh, changed a few things, but I'm gonna definitely get into that as well. And finally, let's look at the financial strength of the company. It has a debt to total capital ratio of around 35 or 50%, which, which is pretty high. Now the company could face trouble servicing its debt um, as both its interest coverage and quick ratios show that neither operating profits nor current assets alone are great enough to satisfy the interest obligations. The short-term uh, assets of a, or the short-term assets of $108 million exceed both its short-term liabilities of 89 million and its long-term liabilities of 74 million. Now they currently have more cash than its total debt, but they have a less than a cash a year of cash runway based on its current free cash flow model. And it has to be noted that shareholders have been significantly diluted in the past year, with the total shares outstanding growing by 47%. So what did the analysts say specifically regarding this company? Well, the average uh, analysts have a strong buy recommendation to buy recommendation on this company right now. The average price target over the next 12 months, they put at $9.33 a share with a high estimate of 10 and a low estimate of eight. With a current price of $5.88, uh, that's a strong upside. Now let's go over a few of the analyst reports uh, in particular. So the street quant ratings rate Blue Apron as a sell. This is driven by a few notable weaknesses, which uh, they believe should have a greater impact than any of the strengths. They could uh, make it more difficult for investors to achieve positive results compared to most of the stocks that they cover. The, uh, the company's weaknesses can be seen in multiple of areas such as deteriorating net income, disappointing return on equity, poor profit margins, weak operating cash flows, and generally disappo disappointing historical performance in the stock itself. And also the Ford Equity Research Report has a hold recommendation, and they say it's gonna perform in line with the market over the next six to 12 months. This projection is based on their analysis of the three basic characteristics they look at, um, earning strength, relative valuation, and recent uh, stock price uh, movement. So let me bring it over here. So am I a buy, hold, or sell recommendation on Blue Apron? Here are my thoughts. Now, Blue Apron has been one of the most disastrous IPOs in recent years. I have to say that. The company went public uh, at an IPO price of $10 a share in June 2017. Now, over the past five years, the stock has lost 92% of its value. In the most recent quarter, Blue Apron reported a net loss of $23 million and a revenue growth of uh, less than 0.2%. And Ortex estimates Blue Apron current, uh, currently has a short percent afloat at about 37 percent and it could be higher than that right now there was no company specific news uh, driving the stock price surge right now the move has all the hallmarks of a short squeeze now the true catalyst that sent the meal kit company higher was a rally that appears to have been that sent the short sellers running for cover now there, there's a relentless competition right now in the meal kit space and blue apron has definitely has ongoing struggles right now I mean, Blue Apron decided to sell its meal kits on Walmart.com, like I just told you. It also sold its meal kits uh, at Costco a few for a few months back in 2018. Now, the deal will expand its direct-to-consumer channel and reduce its dependence on subscriptions. The company has ambitious plans for the future, but it might be underestimating the macroeconomic headwinds that are currently involved in the market right now. Blue Apron initially massed uh, investors uh, with an incredible growth rate in the past. I mean, its revenue surged uh, in 2015, 338% and jumped another 133% to $795 million in 2016. But the, the number of customers more than doubled in both years. But after that, it all came crashing down for them. Between 2016 and 2021, Blue Apron's number uh, of year-end customers plunged from 879,000 to 336,000. Its annual revenue fell for three straight years. It grew by less than 1% in 2020 as the pandemic generated temporary headwinds for meal kit deliveries. 
then dropped again in 2021. Blue Apron's rise to stardom ended as it struggled to keep pace with rivals such as HelloFresh in the increasingly saturated meal kit market right now. Several, several other uh, major retailers, including Amazon and Walmart, also launched their own first pantry uh, party meal kits in 2017. Many customers started to view meal kits as overpriced boxes of groceries. That's how I kind of see it, you know, for the most part. While others who didn't have the time to cook still preferred to order takeout or use food delivery services like DoorDash. Now, while this was happening, meanwhile, pricing pressure, marketing costs, food inflation, and logistics expenses all made it practically impossible for Blue Apron to post a profit. Even though its revenue rose 2% to $470 million in 2021, its net loss still widened from $46 million to $88 million. So how exactly is Blue Apron trying to uh, save the sinking Titanic? Well, folks, CEO Linda Finley, who took the helm in 2019, uh, Blue Apron you know, has mainly focused on reducing its marketing expenses and stabilizing its average revenue among its higher value customers. Basically, Finley wanted to aggressively right size its business to stop the bleeding. Now, the strategy has been slowly working, though. Lindley said that its new partnership with Walmart.com could be an excellent way to introduce Blue Apron to new groups of customers who may not have considered a meal kit before. But Blue Apron's partnership with Walmart isn't an exclusive one either, and Walmart could still sell additional third-party meal kits on its website in the future. Selling individual meal kits could cannibalize Blue Apron's subscription-based business. Blue Apron is fulfilling all the orders at Walmart.com by itself as well, so it could incur higher logistics costs without planting the seeds for stickier subscriptions, which would arguably contradict its original turnaround strategy for focusing on higher-value customers. Now, I do not see that Walmart deal. However, its, its guidance still seems too ambitious. In light of inflationary headwinds and the Walmart deal doesn't seem like a game changer by any means. I think it causes more problems than it really solves. So I'm going to break my recommendation into two parts. One for the long-term growth investor and two for those crazy term day trader meme short squeezers out there that want to make a buck. Now, for the long-term growth investors who want to buy and hold long-term, I would avoid this company right now. I'm a strong sell recommendation and only put a 12-month sustained target price of $8 a share in normal trading markets. I think they still have a long way to go. For those short-term squeezers right now, go ahead and play the game, but also hedge your bets with this one. The skyrocketing share price and the resulting short covering become a self-fulfilling prophecy, which will drive that stock even higher. Now, how high can it go before it pops? I can't say, but there's a lot of money being made on it at the moment. Uh, but make sure you're not the ones holding the bag in the end. Now, traders should be extremely careful trying to time the squeeze and any potential pullback. Short squeezes are notoriously volatile and unpredictable, even to some of the most experienced talk stock traders out there. So there you have it, folks. And as always, don't forget to smash that like button down below and consider subscribing and hit that notification bell if you like your daily stock reviews and uh, recommendations from an unbiased source. Until the next stock update video later today, folks. Ciao.